And welcome back to all of our viewers here on Florida Powerboat Club's YouTube channel. Stu Jones along with producer Ryan McCoy hanging out in the Man Cave in Pompano Beach and actually enjoying it today, guys, because we are continuing the feature coverage of the Bahamas Blast, uh, which was an epic seven-day journey through the northern Bahamas. And uh, this is now episode two. Uh, we left off uh, in Port Ukiah. We're a place we hadn't visited for about five years. So, guys, let's pick it up right there. And before we get started, let's thank our sponsors and advertisers. Our presenting sponsor for the FPC 2023 series of events is Mercury Racing, celebrating 50 years of wide open. And by these sponsors in alphabetical order, Big Thunder Marine, Blackwater Boats, Cigarette Racing Team, Concept Boats, Deep Impact Custom Boats, Fountain Power Boats, Midnight Express Boats, Nortec High Performance Boats, Performance Boat Center, SD Marine Group Isla Morada, and by Statement Marine. And we're now uh, departing from Port Lucaya Marina on Grand Bahama Island, uh, riding on board with uh, Captain Simon, that's Simon Williams, on the brand new Mag Bay 43. And it has been a pleasure riding aboard this uh, beautiful brand new offshore sport fishing boat powered by triple Mercury 600 Verados. Uh, and the viewpoint from the cockpit here now, as we look over the lovely D, uh, there's Port Lucaya Marina. What you can't really see is that the docks are really beat up and it's closed. The marina's been closed for several years. Uh, since about Dorian and has not reopened. Uh, so it's not a destination uh, for transient docks, uh, but let me say this, uh, as we move left here, now we're taking a look here at the Nelsons on their 43 midnight and off in the distance, that's a Pelican Bay resort here in Port Lucaya and it very much remains open uh, and I believe fairly well managed. We have stayed there in the past, I would say many years ago, uh, and uh, but it is the one destination that you could visit and they do have a little bit of docking over on the other side of the resort and I would recommend to any boaters who want to come to Port Lucaya Marina or Port Lucaya Marketplace or this general area this would be a nice stopover for a couple of days but today it was just a fun run uh, lunch stop and we're continuing on now back out through the Bell Channel uh, into the Atlantic we're gonna stay on the south side of Grand Bahama Island and instead of turning back to the west and going along the shoreline uh, back to West End, we're going to make a turn to the left or to the east and travel about another five miles along the shoreline and get into the Grand Lucayan Waterway. And the purpose of that is really just a scenic ride and exploration. I wanted everybody in the club to see this Grand Lucayan Waterway, which is a marvel of, uh, I think, of engineering. They built this uh, very much the same way they built uh, you know, Fort Lauderdale and all of the carved intracoastal waterways uh, in South Florida. And they did this back in the late 60s and the early 70s. And unfortunately, in 1976, when the Bahamas declared its own independence uh, from the crown, uh, it changed the economic environment uh, for the Bahamas. And a lot of the big investment, a lot of the builders, and a lot of the things that were going to happen here, of course, they never happened. So what remains now is this waterway, which... Some privateers, uh, some of the wealthier Bahamians have developed or have put beautiful homes along these lots. And there are probably, I would say several hundred, probably a thousand lots along these waterways and all these carved with concrete seawalls. Otherwise, lots are completely overgrown as you see here. Uh, this at one time would have been a lot that would have been a major resort. This of course, when all the plans in the late 70s were to turn Port Lucaya into a, a new NASA. And that was certainly the plan, but it never came to fruition. And uh, what remains now are some of these nice homes. Uh, sadly, there's an awful lot of beautiful homes that have been abandoned in more recent years. And uh, it's sad to see that. But nonetheless, it's a very interesting cruise to go through the Grand Lucayan Waterway. Uh, Max is obviously very interested in the scenery as he checks his phone over. <laughs> oh, kids. Uh, but we uh, we had this ride through the waterway. I told everybody to hold back and go through one by one, and we spaced out the uh, transition through the canal. It's about a 15-mile ride from the south end to the north end. But my plan was to get us up to the north end and then stop the Mag Bay and get Tyler to put up the drone so we could get a couple of shots of the boats coming in uh, through the waterway. This is the narrow section. 
and what this does is connects the last set of developed uh, land and islands and lots uh, through this uh, about a three or four mile stretch of just pretty much straight waterway. There's it, it's very narrow, uh, but plenty of depth. And uh, it's a waterway that allows you to transit through Grand Bahama Island without having to go through either to the east or, or to the west, which can be uh, very time consuming and uh, with some tricky navigation. So here's a nice shot of Robert Nelson uh, Team Helios, 43-foot Midnight Express, first time with the club, first time run, just got the boat recently, and they're making it a family affair. I got his wife and two sons riding along. And quite a uh, interesting uh, diversion from a big offshore center console with quad outboards to uh, who's riding along behind. Well, that's Cliff Anderson in his 34-foot MTI, uh, twin Mercury 400Rs, uh, soon to be 450Rs. But just showing you really the interesting diversity of our fleet for this particular event. Uh, not accustomed to seeing 34 MTIs go on these runs. Of course, a lot of Nortex, as we now see Roger and Pam Anderson coming off plane in their Nortex 390 Sport uh, Team Wild Horses. And we welcome back Eric and Ivy Ducro in their Nortex 390 Sport, triple 400 Rs. Uh, as we now look to the north, so this is the final exit from the Grand Lucayan Waterway. What you can't see, but off to one side is a very developed uh, patch of uh, you know residential lots that never got uh, developed and there are no buildings or structures there. Uh, now we have Hayes and Carlin Wilson in there, Nortec uh, 390, similar power triple Mercury Racing 400 Rs, a uh, great looking boat. And so that wraps up the scenic part of the Grand Lucayan uh, Waterway Tour. Now back out into the uh, open bay waters on the what would be the north side of Grand Bahama Island and not quite into what we call the Sea of Abaco. We're going to be cruising through that in the next day as we head eastbound. But really just, uh, I think there's a lot of people saying, wow, what was that? <laughs> it's like, what the heck? They have this? And, uh, you know, it's just amazing. And to me, it continues to be a mystery that uh, the Grand Bahama Island has so much development and so many things that were planned that just never came to fruition. And uh, it, it, to this day, is still a, a mystery to me. So that pretty much wraps up today's excursion, which will total out to be around 80 miles. We're going to head back to West End now for overnight. And uh, tomorrow we're going to head out on the waterways eastbound to Hopetown. And it's going to be a big day on the water today, but a very beautiful one at that because we are in the Sea of Abaco, which is uh, protected waters for the most part, uh, running all the way along the top side of Grand Bahama Island. Uh, you can see we got a nice pack moving along here, cruising at about 55 to 60 miles per hour. It's going to be exactly 100 miles to our lunch stop, which is going to be Spanish Key in the Bahamas. Uh, we're going to hang out there for a couple of hours at least uh, and enjoy that uh, stopover while we then continue on to Hopetown later in the day. And here we are now at Spanish Key. Just uh, got the boats settled in. There's Mark Berman's 60-foot uh, Sunseeker. He got a head start and beat us all here. Uh, but yes, a perfect ride today. We did get uh, stopped here when we tied the boats up at the dock at Spanish Key. We got stopped by a, um, a new division uh, of the Bahamas government called like the Bahamas, uh, oh, I don't know. They're kind of like the Coast Guard-ish. Uh, but they wanted to inspect some of the vessels, and they did. Uh, but they were friendly, and they really didn't have an agenda other than they just saw a bunch of powerboats come in and decided to board us. And uh, so we got through that okay. Nobody got arrested. There's a nice shot of Spanish Key. Uh, way back in the distance, the big yacht there, I believe it is a Richmond uh, that is uh, that belongs to the owner. I did meet him several years earlier, and he is here uh, most of the time he's from Fort Lauderdale but he spends a lot of time over here on the island and it is quite a developed island as well there's no real city or villages but there are uh, some private homes around the island and there is a big airstrip now on the other side of the island is the open ocean so that this basically is a barrier island uh, as are there's many islands like this in a chain that now create the Sea of Abaco and that's why we have such protective waters uh, cruising through uh, from West End all the way eastbound to Elbow Key and to the beyond the Abacos. All of the islands around here are considered to be the Abacos, and that's just kind of a term that explains that they are near the main island of Abaco. Now, for those of you who might wish to stay here for a few days, uh, there are a variety of beachfront rooms and uh, marina condos available from the management uh, up to about four bedroom. 
uh, and it, it appears they have some pretty reasonable prices. So I would suggest that to anyone that wants to stay a little longer to just reach out to Spanish Key. Uh, there's a phone number and a website uh, and give it a try. They don't have enough to handle a large group, so I doubt that FPC would be able to do a stop over here. But I think that I would certainly give it a try. I think you'd have a great time. And there's a better shot now of the marina. You can see you know, pretty much empty those other piers over there. We're the only guys that have come in. A uh, handful of boats. Uh, looking back in the distance, you'll see it's a long, skinny island. Uh, the beaches on the other side are absolutely beautiful. And you can see that today, uh, ocean side is also very calm. There's virtually no wind whatsoever. And then looking way, way back up in the corner, uh, that is the airstrip that allows people to come and go. And so some of the homeowners... I uh, do have aircraft and uh, they are able to come and go. I know that the owner of the resort also flies a small aircraft, so that allows him to come and go. And there's the fuel ship over there. They're in the middle of fueling right now. Be very careful when you see one of those ships near the entrance to any marina in the Bahamas. That usually means that they're actively fueling and the fuel lines are submerged. Uh, so you could quite easily boat over top of a fuel line and uh, you can imagine the damage that would occur if you if your propeller ever penetrated that line. So just be always mindful when you see these ships to stay well clear of them uh, entering the harbor. Well, it was a pleasant stopover. Maybe next time we'll get some more video on land and up and around the resort because they do have a nice pool beside the restaurant as well. Uh, but uh, we got things uh, wrapped up here and pretty soon we were back out on the waterways heading eastbound towards Elbow Key and again we'll remain in these protected waters of the Sea of Abaco. Today's uh, ride, the rest of the ride is exactly 47 miles to Hope Town Harbor. And for those of you who have any questions about the navigation, there is primarily one route to follow and it's fairly well marked in your GPS, uh, but uh, there are some deviations from that depending on your draft and you know how big of a boat you have. Uh, for the most part, it's pretty much a straight shot, though, right to Hope Town. And that off in the distance is the island of Abaco, uh, which we're going to be driving alongside it for, well, all of the day, uh, you know, all of today and even for our fun run the next day. Abaco is a big, huge island that sort of has a, a right angle shape to it. It turns and it starts from the running from the west to the east and then makes a big turn and goes then to the south so we're gonna see a lot of that island but here now with this landmark with the uh, red and white striped lighthouse we are looking straight at Elbow Key and that will mark Hopetown Harbor and this is where we're gonna hang out for the next three days what a great ride we've had all day you can see the skies are clear the seas are calm this is the best weather that we have seen in a very long time and now we uh, get a chance for our first round of scenery entering uh, Hopetown Harbor uh, a lot of beautiful homes, many of them have been rebuilt since the recent storm when Dorian came through here in 2019. And those were the, the very few lucky ones, but there are other buildings and older buildings around the harbor, including one entire resort that got leveled and have not since been rebuilt. But I think that most of the homeowners uh, in the smaller properties, little hotels, did get rebuilt. Uh, anything that we saw from the harbor was in pretty good shape. And uh, it was just nice to be back in Hopetown, one of my favorite places in the Bahamas. And here is the local fuel dock and ship store. This is where everyone in the harbor will get their fuel. They're open seven days a week. And uh, that lighthouse off in the distance, it's actually on the same property as the marina that operates this fuel dock and ship store. And it does provide access to the public normally, but at the present time it is closed for renovations. Now we're uh, over here at Hopetown Inn and Marina. We've checked in, not too busy in the pool, and there's Tyler uh, sitting in his patio chair with his uh, drone controls, getting ready to fly the drone. And you're about to see what I feel is the best 
depiction of what this Hopetown Inn and Marina is. We've never had uh, any drone coverage of this facility, and do remember that they did get damages in the storm, but nowhere near as much as some of the other properties, and they quickly rebuilt, and what they've done now is just turn this property from good to fantastic, uh, and there's a great shot of the property they're on. You can see they have plenty of dockage out front, and all of those pink buildings are a part of the resort. The ones in the background are the older buildings, but then we are about to see, or we will eventually see some of the new villas uh, that are on the other side of the property. And one thing you'll notice too, you're looking, you see those little roadways are like almost like driveways off to, on the right-hand side. That's all they have. They don't have any road access. They have trails, I guess are the very best you could say, where the local garbage collection guys will come. They come in on a barge and the garbage truck will drive down through these trails and remove the garbage from the restaurant, I think once or twice a week, which are in big, huge dumpsters, but that's it. You'll never, you won't get a taxi cab to come to the property. Everything that you do here is by boat. If you want to get a, a water taxi to go to another location in the harbor or to go out for lunch or go out for dinner somewhere, these water taxis will run virtually all day long. Uh, now as the shot turns, you can see way off on the left. Now those uh, white buildings, one, two, three, four, there's about eight of those villas over there. And those are the newer properties. They were redone after the hurricane and they're really quite nice and I'll get a chance to show you that later in the show uh, and I it's where I stayed and uh, I found it to be fantastic but uh, now a nice shot of the island as a whole so that's called Elbow Key and it does have a village there's a lot of people who live here year-round and there are you know, a handful of restaurants that you can visit and and just a handful of smaller resorts but this is the biggest resort certainly the nicest one that we feel uh, from the standpoint of being boaters, it has everything that we really need. And with the restaurant on site that is located uh, right beside the pool, uh, I find that, you know, you can have all three meals a day here, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, but I find that the service and the quality of the food is really just fantastic. And, you know, you really could hang out here for a couple of days at a time and not really have to leave. And, uh, you know, I think some of the people may have even done that. But what's more important is the location. Now, Elbow Key is a great hub for local boating and going off on various excursions in different directions. So uh, for us, uh, for the next couple of days, we do have those excursions planned. But for a lot of other boaters that are, you know, maybe on their way to other islands in the Bahamas, it could be going south to the Berries or down to Nassau. And when you factor in all of the destinations around Abaco, uh, there's really a lot to do, a lot of places to go. And you don't even have to be into fishing you know of course we don't do any fishing but we have plenty of excursions planned and lots of cool places that we can go daily so this location here elbow key is really just a great spot to settle in for three or four days and that gives us uh, plenty of opportunities to do local cruising uh, to other area attractions well i'm glad that we were able to share with you these beautiful aerial visuals uh, from tyler's drone the weather was fantastic and uh, this is something uh, that we've never been able to do before but I think now you have a better idea of what you can expect when you arrive here at Hopetown Inn and Marina. And for those of you who are planning to join us uh, in 2024 the event name has changed uh, from the Bahamas Blast we're now going to call it the Northern Bahamas Island Hop for lack of a better name because that pretty much describes exactly what we did uh, hopping from one island to the next for several days. It's all on the club website at flpowerboat.com.
And uh, it's day four now and time for one of those excursions uh, we were talking about earlier in the show. And today's destination, uh, leaving here from Hopetown Inn and Marina, is going to be southbound. We're heading to Little Harbor, uh, where there's a quaint little place called Pete's Pub. And it's located in a protected harbor called Little Harbor. Uh, way down uh, at the southern part of Abaco, the island of Abaco. So we've got about a 20 to 25 mile ride today and getting the boats ready to take off. And we are going to remain in the protected waters uh, inside what they call the Angel Keys, uh, which will be off to our port side. And there's a lot of tricky navigation as we get closer down to our destination. So I think we're going to have to uh, maintain our role as the official pace boat here on the 43 Mag Bay. Uh, and keep everybody in tow so that we don't get any trouble because there are some hard turns, sharp turns, and a lot of shoals that we will have to avoid on today's trip. And this is also a good point to mention that we do a lot of uh, mixing up of the crews at this point because it's not necessary for us to take every single boat to every lunch outing that we, uh, we're heading out to. So if you're a couple, say two people on, a, on one center console and you've got some friends that you've been riding along with sometimes it's good to kind of share the boating responsibilities and maybe team up jump on their boat leave one of the boats behind and uh, save a little fuel and it makes it a little more fun for everybody i know that mark berman uh, didn't want to bring his big sun seeker all the way down there and i don't blame him for that because it is kind of a tricky ride through a lot of shallow water so they jumped on board uh, with us on the mag bay so we had mark berman uh, his first mate and uh, Mr. Michael Friedman uh, riding with us today on the Mag Bay heading for lunch. And once again, a beautiful ride uh, through the Bahamas, very scenic, as we now arrive at Little Harbor. Uh, got the Jones boys, Max on the left, Tyler, and there's our friend Michael Friedman uh, and the lovely Miss D reaching down to get all the lines and fenders up for the guys so that we can be prepared when we arrive here at the dock. And here we are now all settled in at Pete's Pub. And you can see there's a lot of, uh, or at least a handful of other boats hanging out here. Some people on the dock, some people uh, on anchor. And many people stay for days on anchor here because it's such a peaceful little harbor. Uh, Pete's Pub is, a, is owned by an American, Pete himself, and he was there. Uh, he finishes up every year in about August, around now actually. I think we only had uh, one more day uh, before he closes up for the fall and winter. And then I'm not sure when he comes back, but I did get a chance to meet him on the dock. He stays in that little shed, that little dock master's house, or whatever you call it, on that long dock. He hangs out there and drinks beer and welcomes his guests. And I got a chance to hang out with him and just actually hung around for probably half an hour and uh, exchanged a lot of stories about uh, the many years that we've both been hanging out in the Bahamas. I think he's got a few on me, though. But... I've got about 33 years of doing the Bahamas. I think he's probably got 40 or 50. Uh, but he was telling me he's on his way back home. I think he told me he lives in Pennsylvania or possibly Maryland, but somewhere on the eastern seaboard of the United States. And here now is a great shot of the other side of the island. So you've got the protected harbor, and now we're over on the ocean side. And you can see the you know stark differences between that calm, protected cove and these, uh, you know, 
basically beachfront waters. Not a sandy beach really here, but just a lot of hard coral, but nonetheless very scenic and beautiful, and uh, just the color of the water is truly amazing. And a nice shot, you can see just what a nice rustic barefoot beach bar this is. Uh, all of the uh, t-shirts, like I said earlier, we used to do that at Spanish Key, but a lot of people are doing it here. They just hang a t-shirt and sign it and away you go. Uh, but very family friendly and fantastic food and really wonderful service. Uh, everybody just had a fantastic time here. And uh, there's one more cool shot pulling back out over this beautiful protected cove. Guys, it's paradise here. I mean, just look how beautiful it is. And, uh, you know, you can get in here any day of the week, all through the summer months. I think they're open every day. So I think this is really just one of the Bahamas little gems that we are able to discover and take advantage of. And I'm just so glad that we were able to make it here to Pete's Pub on such a beautiful day. Well, sooner or later, we've uh, got to keep rolling, and I know that there's a plan to get back to Hopetown before the storm rolls in, uh, so let's uh, focus on Mark Fisher for a little bit now. Here with his 43-foot uh, Blackwater, just took delivery of this boat. Of course, he owns the company, which builds both Blackwater and Deep Impact uh, in Miami. Uh, they just moved into their brand-new factory in Opelika. We were able to visit there just recently, doing a fantastic job, but... Uh, and I did say earlier that we're a cruising club, we never fish. Well, I take those words back when it comes to Mark Fisher. You can see that he's got at least a half a dozen rods out in the holders. And yes, indeed, they do fish. And he's actually getting pretty darn good at it uh, because the more time he spends in the Bahamas sailing around in his Ocean Alexander yacht, uh, and this Blackwater is in tow. This is the tender for the yacht. And he's actually getting pretty good because every once in a while he sends me a picture of his latest catch. And he has landed a wide variety of all the big major species and uh, doing quite well out on those salt water now with this uh, black water fishing all over the Bahamas and Caribbean. And now we've moved into the evening hours and uh, it's time to go out and play a little more. But this time we're going to let somebody else do the driving. Our captain here on the uh, taxi boat is going to take us over to a parking lot where we can get a taxi service and go to the Firefly for dinner tonight. Firefly is the island's most popular restaurant, and we have got the Nelsons on board right now. Uh, I enjoyed the evening riding with everybody to get everyone over uh, to the restaurant. Their first time on a family trip with FPC, and of course it's going to be their first time at the Firefly tonight and I am absolutely certain they're gonna enjoy their experience there because it is a beautiful restaurant with fantastic food. The taxi service operates uh, all day long and uh, he's even given us his cell phone so he's on call if we need him later in the evening to get back to our hotels. Now moving into day five and uh, this part of the trip was entirely my own invention. In fact, I was by myself, I got up early because I was very curious to see what it was like in behind the resort and what these trails were like. Uh, but what I really wanted to do was get over by the lighthouse. So I'm looking now out the back of Hopetown Inn and Marina. This is the main road <laughs> coming into the place. So these dirt roads or dirt trails are all connected, uh, but the main purpose of them is to really service the property and be able to have emergency services if necessary, but also, uh, you know, the garbage collection. So the big garbage truck comes two or three times a week off of a barge, and uh, they have their own uh, RT vehicles like bulldozers and big tractors for moving the dumpsters around. Uh, but I decided to take a walk uh, because I wanted to get over closer to the lighthouse which I had always wanted to explore, but it's just one of those things uh, you run out of time or you just can't figure out how to get out, get over there. Uh, but I decided to do it by foot and lo and behold, there's a giant marina back in here and it's called Lighthouse Marina. Uh, and it's the same people that operate uh, the lighthouse and the marina and of course the gas dock and the bait shop and the ship store and all that. But it's Sunday morning. So you can imagine, you know, what it's like on a Sunday morning around here. Everything is closed. 
Uh, the Bahamians are uh, somewhat, you know, religious uh, people. They uh, don't uh, like to work on Sunday, so Sunday is a church day, and there was nobody here whatsoever. Uh, I was kind of keeping my eye open for a watchdog or something, but that didn't happen either. Uh, but quite an interesting collection of what appears to be maybe deserted or abandoned vessels. Uh, but the kind of boats that, you know, mostly come from North America, you know, mostly American builders. It's an interesting story about these Albury Brothers boats because this was originally a Bahamas boat builder from Manowar Key that started way back in the 1950s. But more recently, in about 2003, production moved to a Palm Beach uh, boat building facility. And ever since then, um, they have successfully built hundreds of boats uh, ranging from 18 to 33 foot. And it appears that they have a very loyal following of buyers. Just a lot of boats at this marina. It's a huge marina uh, and they have a protected basin in the back where the boats can come around and be taken out with a forklift. So they do have an in and out, you know, dry storage service here. So you can keep a small boat here uh, year round if you'd like. And there were some pretty nice boats here too. This is a Valhalla uh, with a pair of Merc 400s, mainline 400s. And this is an absolutely beautiful boat. Again, you know, it's about seven in the morning, 7.30 a.m. on a Sunday, nobody around at all. So uh, I guess, Technically, I'm not trespassing because I just walked in through the back <laughs> entrance <laughs> and I'm trying to get down to the lighthouse. So I'm a tourist. Come on, give me a break. But you know us uh, guys that we love our boats. So it, my curiosity just kept going. I wanted to see what they had back in here. And there's that beautiful lighthouse. I am getting closer. There she is. That's the big machine we all wanted to see, the Wiggins Marina Bull. Got an interesting uh, body style with the big steps leading up, but that's the, the machine that does all the heavy lifting around here. And uh, they've got a nice area where they take the boats in and out of the water. So this is where they do it. This is their staging pier. And beyond that, again, another protected, uh, very quiet little cove where anybody can just come in here and throw an anchor and, and stay in this peaceful harbor. So it really is a nice place where you can throw anchor and just uh, get away from the main waterways in this protected cove. Well, I finally made it down uh, to the dock side, to the fuel dock and uh, the ship store of course is closed, but there's my sign guys, to the lighthouse. Uh, so away I went, uh, walking along this little path uh, because I wanted to get up in the lighthouse today and take some pictures. And for me, this has been something on my wish list for probably 15 or 20 years since I've been coming here. And finally, I've arrived to find out that it just closed, like literally just closed a few days earlier and is going to be closed until the end of September. So I guess I'm going to have to wait my turn, guys. They're replacing all the floors inside the lighthouse. Uh, no access to the public, so I'm going to have to come back next time. And while the lighthouse is essentially privately owned uh, by the owner of the marina, uh, they do have a fund uh, that helps to restore and beautify the lighthouse. And uh, it seems to be working because they just painted it recently. And the owner of the marina, well, he lives right there in that house at the foot of the lighthouse. And just about a minute after I took this photo and video, uh, the owner called down to the dock master and told him to get me the hell off the property. <laughs> so I left. Oh well, mission almost accomplished. Well now, continuing our day, and today's excursion is going to be to No Name Key, among other destinations. Uh, we've got a full agenda today. No Name Key is the uh, location where they have the Pig Beach, one of three in the Bahamas. Uh, so that's going to be our destination. We also have a lunch stop planned. Uh, which will be at the Green Turtle Resort, and then we're going to maybe do a couple of stopovers later at Great Guana Key. Uh, but that's the plan, and it uh, looks like Simon's got his uh, rods and reels out, getting ready to go fishing today. After all, the Mag Bay 43 is a high-end fishing boat. And away we go through these beautiful waters, and uh, can't help but notice what a fantastic day we have yet again. Now day number five, just beautiful weather. That's a treasure key way off to the distance there. And uh, yes, that is a grounded yacht that has been there, I think for several days, weeks or months. I'm not sure how long, but it looks like it's been there for quite a while. Well guys, it's gonna be time to feed the piggies soon.
these are little bits of turkey sausage. And we learned this at Spanish um, Wells, where they had these little skewers. They were a little longer, and then they had little bits of meat on the end. So this is a way to keep the pigs entertained without giving them too much food, but giving them something that's easy to play around with. So we just basically got drink stirrers, and I got some cups from the bar, and I you feed them you put their little piece of meat on the end like that, and they'll eat it. Only it's one pig here that doesn't like it, but everybody else, all the other ones love it. And then once he eats that one, you just push this one up to the end, like that, and then you just feed them like that. So of course, if you're gonna feed the stingrays, this is what I recommend, just a little box of squid uh, from the bait shop. This is uh, one pound of squid. And, uh, you know, obviously you, it's frozen when you get it, so you gotta let it thaw out a little bit. And then you just get a good fish knife and you chop it up into little pieces and you put it in the cups. So we put it in these cups and then you fill the cup up about there. And then when the stingrays come down, you keep your bait up and you can just give them one little piece at a time. And uh, otherwise, a beautiful day here on a Sunday at No Name Key. This is stop one our, on our three stop day trip. Starting out here, then we're gonna go over there to uh, Green Turtle Club and have some lunch. Uh, we'll be there for a couple of hours. And then after that, we're gonna go back towards Great Wanakee and we're gonna stop at Grabber's. So, uh, got a nice day ahead planned. It's zero o'clock right now, so let's see. So far, we're managing our time quite well. And once again, and I think this is starting to happen more often because we're carefully picking the days in which we travel, but we really had the place to ourselves. There was only one or two other boats here at the time. I think we had, count on what, we had six boats, I guess, in our group, so we had plenty of room uh, to anchor and get up close to the beach. Uh, and this is all really new. Uh, the no-name key pig experience has always been here, but this new restaurant called Big O's and um, bar and restaurant is, is relatively new. I've never seen it before. Uh, so it's nice to have uh, another place that we can stop and uh, have lunch, but we're gonna do the lunch thing at, a, at a Green Turtle Club, as I mentioned earlier. But you can see just how beautiful of a beach this is. And it really is just a nice stopover no matter what, whether you're into the whole pig feeding thing or not. Uh, but there really weren't a lot of pigs on the beach. I think there was maybe five or six pigs that we saw uh, it wasn't uh, quite like Spanish wells where there's you know dozens of pigs and I think you get a little bit more of an experience uh, with you know the whole pig experience is bigger at Spanish wells but we didn't get a chance to do that earlier in June uh, because we had some bad weather coming in on that trip so we missed it all together so this turns out to be our only pig beach experience that we've had in 2023 so even though there was only five or six little pigs here it worked out well and we saw you know two or three stingrays and maybe a nurse shark that's about it as far as the in water goes but uh, a nice closer shot here that you can see this beach is absolutely beautiful uh, and it's a nice stopover on any given day And one thing I want to mention again, and we discussed this when we were in Bimini, and that is the importance of being able to turn the boat in with your stern facing the beach. You can see we got away from the uh, the green, you know, kind of like muckety bottom, and now we're in the nice soft sand. And the only way you can do that is to turn the boat around, trim your motors up, and have a second anchor 
so that your boat doesn't swing around. And everyone was ready for that program. It worked out well, and I think uh, we all had a great time here. And our next stop, as I promised everybody, would be to the uh, beautiful Green Turtle Club, and it's on Green Turtle Key. It's a much bigger key. Uh, it has a lot of private residences, uh, has a, a big town as well. Uh, it really is a great destination location. We've stayed here for three or four days at a time, and a, the Green Turtle Club has a good variety of lodging. Uh, mostly they have these little waterfront cabins. They have two restaurants on property. One is for fine dining, the other is more casual uh, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, a great bar and a nice uh, souvenir shop where you can pick up Green Turtle Club uh, souvenir items. There's a, actually a seaplane over there in the harbor. It's all inside this protected harbor. We were able to call ahead and get some transient docking for the group. Uh, and you could see it wasn't really that busy here. Uh, I think that, again, is a, a sort of the trend now. I think boaters are starting to realize that the northern family of islands are back in business. It's taken a while for a lot of people to get back here. Uh, and you can see there's still a lot of empty slips here. And right at the height of summer, you know, we're in early August, you'd think this place would be full. But we're certainly not complaining because uh, we like to be able to easily come and go. And that's exactly what we've been doing. So while everybody is enjoying lunch uh, in the restaurant, we've got Tyler up here with the drone now uh, looking out over Green Turtle Key. Again, you can see what a beautiful island it is. Very lush tropical vegetation uh, throughout the island uh, and some uh, nice upscale homes and great waterfront properties. Of course, the way to get around on the island is a golf cart and you can rent them right at the Green Turtle Club. And when we stayed there for a few days, we all got golf carts and we were able to ride them around the island and into town every night. So that really was a nice uh, attraction as well to be able to do that. There we are, <laughs> got the entire group here. Uh, this is the restaurant I was uh, mentioning here at Green Turtle Club where we're all having lunch. They serve three meals a day. Uh, a wonderful hangout, screened in uh, back patio with nice views of the water. But I guess we're gonna have to uh, close out our segment here featuring the Green Turtle Club. All I can say is it brings back very fond memories of staying here before and anyone who cruises through the Bahamas. If you could stay here for a night or two, I would highly recommend it. And now heading to our next destination as uh, the Jones boys hamming it up a little uh, as we take a ride now to Great Guana Key. Um, Tyler, Max, and uh, Mark Berman, my neighbor from Pompano Beach, owner of Van Marine, uh, left the Sunseeker back at the dock and took a ride on the Mag Bay today. Uh, but we're going to stop off here at Grabber's. Uh, again, another fantastic spot that's, uh, I think, relatively new. I've never been here before, but they have uh, a neat way to dock the boats. They have dock masters to come out immediately to help but they wishbone all the boats in on an angle and, and I think that's a great idea you just throw a stern anchor out and you creep the boat up to the dock and then they pitch you on about a 45 degree angle and what I like about that is it allows the boats to come and go at will even when you fill this place up I mean we're arriving here late in the afternoon on Sunday I think it was a lot busier earlier in the day uh, but now it's uh, closer to 5 or 6 p.m. But we decided we wanted to hang out here and uh, have a drink and, you know, jump in the pool and just kind of check the place out. And it's fantastic. I mean, it's a beautiful beach bar with a tiki hut. And, well, you guys can see it. Uh, this is what you get when you show up at Grabber's. They've got some interesting concoctions at the bar and some great food. Looking off in the distance there, that's all great guana key. And many of you have heard of a place called Nippers. Well, it's way back up there on the hill. That would have been our alternative stop if we didn't go to Grabber's, but we wanted to try it out and I think it was worth the trip. And just doing a little walk around with the camera at Grabber's and you could see a lot of this place. It's brand new. I don't know when they built it, but obviously they built it after Dorian went through 
and uh, but everything is fairly new, and I just like the the pleasant, casual vibe of the place. Uh, certainly, a lot easier to get in and out of. Going to Nippers has been sort of our tradition at Great Guana Key, but Nippers, you have to dock the boat and then walk around the road and uh, up the trail, and and then you get to Nippers, and it's yeah usually fairly busy. But this place, uh, you know, we we really enjoyed it, and it was worth trying out something new. And I think I'd look forward to coming back here again one time soon. I think it would be nice to be here, you know, in the height of Sunday afternoon when there's a lot of people here. Uh, it would be a fun stopover. We're going to wrap it up now for our day trip. It was a great day on the water. Remember, we went to No Name Key, to Green Turtle Club on Green Turtle Key, and then now uh, to Grabbers on Great Guana Key. The weather remained uh, absolutely beautiful. Light winds, calm water, sunny skies. Uh, guys, it doesn't get much better than that. Uh, for our final day of excursions here in the Abacos. And back now at Hopetown in Ann Marina. And uh, that villa that I was telling you guys about, I just had to show it to you. So I got some video footage. And uh, my tour guide here is this little kitty cat that uh, seemed to be wandering in and out at uh, leisure. So this actually was one of the villas booked by Mark and Eileen Fisher, and they uh, had an overabundance of beds and not that many people to stay in them. So I actually shared this villa with uh, Captain Tim, and between the two of us, uh, we kind of had this giant unit all to ourselves, which was fabulous. You got this uh, full kitchen right here with all the necessary appliances, which of course we didn't use, not once, but this is the sort of like the loft room upstairs, at the top of the stairs. Uh, and they have, I think, different configurations. This one has the full bed and then the, the day bed, whatever. So you could sleep two or three people in this room. Has its own bathroom attached. So really that makes it, I think, three bathrooms in this entire uh, property. This one's got the full-size shower. So really nice and modern and clean. And then back downstairs, there are two full bedrooms. And again, each with its own bathroom. So really, uh, you're talking about potentially six, seven I think the maximum capacity they say is eight. I believe that one of the couches in the living room is a sleeper sofa. Uh, and even if it's not, it's a huge couch. So there's plenty of sleeping. The proximity to the dock is really good. You literally step off your balcony right to your boat. So uh, we've got some great plans for the upcoming 2024 event where we're gonna rent as many of these villas as possible. So I think the time is to start planning now, guys, if you wanna join us for that event that takes place in August. We're already signing boats up for it, and uh, we hope you can join us. Day six now, and uh, one more perfect day for our trip back uh, to the mainland. About 225 miles all the way. We're going to make a stop at West End, which is 150 miles. Uh, here we are now traveling through the Sea of Abaco as we say farewell to these beautiful islands uh, of the Abacos as we know them. Uh, and we call it the Northern Family Islands. And that's what we're going to call the trip next year again, guys. The Northern Bahamas Island Hop uh, 2024 takes place in August. And again, all that information is on the club website at flpowerboat.com. Well, that was an amazing adventure in the Bahamas. Uh, we just finished four episodes with feature coverage. Two of them were the Bahamas Poker Run uh, down through Bimini, Chub Key, Nassau, and beyond. And these last two episodes... Uh, featuring our entire trip through the northern family of islands. Guys, we've got more excitement just around the corner. In fact, we've got the Summer Poker Run Tour. Uh, Florida Powerball Club gets out on the road every summer and travels to poker runs around the United States. This year, we did eight poker runs over 8,000 miles in eight different states, and it's all coming to you right here on Florida Powerball Club's YouTube channel. Guys, you can't afford to miss that episode, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell. And I have great news to report that we are now right at 39,000 subscribers, and we want to hit 40,000, so please... Make sure you're a subscriber and tell your friends all about Florida Powerboat Club's channel so we can get those numbers up and spread the word about the Florida powerboating lifestyle. Be sure to check out the website at flpowerboat.com for all of the details about upcoming poker run events as well as membership information. You can follow us on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club and you can follow us on Twitter and on these Instagram pages. 
Thanks to all of our viewers uh, for your wonderful comments on our page. And you guys know who you are. And I really do appreciate that. But if you have questions or comments you want to direct to me specifically, please use my personal email at stu at flpowerboat.com. I check that daily and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We're going to sign off for now. This is Stu Jones along with our producer Ryan McCoy in the Pompano Beach studio. Have fun out there, guys. Be safe on the waterways. Wear your life jackets when the time is right. And always respect your fellow boaters. Bye for now.